These black fractal-like patterns burned into the surface of this wood are called Lichtenberg figures. They're created by painting the surface of wood with a conductive solution of sodium bicarbonate and then applying 10,000 volts of electricity across the now partially conductive surface. As the high voltage electricity is discharged through the insulating wood, the electric field causes a physical breakdown of the bonds between the atoms and the insulator. This creates a conductive path for free electrons to flow. The flowing current heats the wood and causes it to burn. As the wood burns from the electricity, the heat from it also dries out the conductive solution. This means that the electricity will often follow one path, then it will dry out and cause the electricity to fork and follow a different path of lower resistance. The highest current flows through the path of least resistance, therefore the branches of the Lichtenberg figures will always follow the electrical weaknesses in the wood when created in this way. This creates these amazing fractal-like forked lightning patterns in the wood. This video is basically just going to be a compilation of all of the different experiments that I've tried with the Lichtenberg figures and explaining what worked well and what didn't. To create these patterns you need a very high voltage, in the order of a few kilovolts at least. It almost goes without saying that this sort of voltage is extremely dangerous and will stop your heart instantly if you make a single mistake while using it. Only try to replicate these experiments if you fully understand the risk of high voltages and how not to die when playing with them. So as boring as it is, this project definitely needs a few safety tips before anything else. If a current of greater than 10 milliamps flows across your heart, it can actually kill you. And this means that with the average skin resistance of human skin, 50 to 100 volts can be potentially lethal if you're unlucky. However, this method also requires a conductive solution that if it gets on your hands, can drastically lower the resistance of human skin, making it even more lethal. Plus, the voltage is so high that normal insulators, such as wood and rubber, can still break down and carry current. I think you can understand by this point that this is pretty dangerous. So here are a few things that I did to keep myself safe. Firstly, and this is quite obvious, I only touched the circuit when it was turned off, but not just the circuit, the entire workbench and the area around it should be avoided completely while the high voltage is there. Don't even touch the insulated rubber wires while they're live because you can still get a lethal shock from them. I turned the circuit on and off from as far away as possible by plugging in the transformer and then switching on the socket. This allowed me to stand a few meters back while the electricity was switched on and off. When I turned off the transformer I always unplugged it from the socket because sometimes a switch can be a bit dodgy and I wouldn't want to trust my life on something like that. Also it's best to do the electric burning outside especially if you're working on MDF because it creates some nasty smoke and some nasty fumes. Unfortunately sometimes I had to do it inside because it was raining outside but I had very good ventilation and also a respirator. So as you've been able to see from some of these videos, some of the results that you can achieve with this circuit under the right conditions are absolutely amazing and it makes some really interesting patterns. And you don't actually need many things. The main thing that you're going to need is going to be the high voltage power supply. And there are a few different options that you can go for. As you can see here, I've opted for a 10 kilovolt neon transformer. This is the simplest and best option in my opinion since it can give you a really high voltage 10 kilovolts and it's also pretty cheap. It cost me about 45 quid off eBay. Another option is to connect together microwave transformers and step up the voltage from the mains to about 2000 or 3000 volts. This doesn't create as good patterns since the higher the voltage the better the patterns are going to be and it's also a lot more dangerous since these are unregulated power supplies and when it makes the connection between the two arcs it often jumps to very high amps and will pop the breaker of the circuit. So I'd say that a neon transformer is probably a much safer option to go for. It's also much more convenient and easier but if you want to save money Microwave oven transformers can also be used. The next thing to talk about is the conductive solution. The only thing that you can vary with this solution is the concentration, and I basically just added sodium bicarbonate until the solution was fully saturated and no more would dissolve. I didn't really experiment with lower concentrations, but I got great results with these high concentrations, so I didn't see any reason to vary them. More important than the concentration of the solution is the amount of the solution soaked into the surface of the wood that you want it to burn. I found that if too much of the solution was soaked into the wood and the wood was too saturated, then it wouldn't get hot enough and no burning would occur. There'd just be an electrical connection through the solution and nothing would happen. I got the best results by brushing a thin layer of the solution over the wood and leaving it to soak for about 60 seconds before turning on the power. This depends on the absorption rate of the particular wood that you're using and the size of the burning that you want to do. I found that on larger burnings, the wood would often dry out and the burning would stop completely even though the power was on full, so I'd have to reapply water and possibly move the electrodes to a different place. I experimented with a few different ways of attaching the electricity to the wood. I started off first by hammering nails into the wood and then wrapping the wires around them. This worked fine for the shorter burnings and burning smaller pieces of wood, however for the longer burnings, the nails would often fall out as an area was burned around them, then it would disconnect the circuit and I'd have to start again. 
I found that wood screws work a lot better, especially working on MDF since they've got a much better hold in the wood and they're much less likely to fall out. However, the easiest way that I found to transmit the power to the wood was simply just to use crocodile clips since they can clip onto thin bits of wood and they're fairly secure. Since it's an AC power supply, the burning sort of happens from both of the electrodes and then the trees of the branches grow together and then the burning's finished when the trees join up and there's one electrical path made between the wood and then once that's done, no more paths are created and you need to turn off the power or it'll just carry on burning the wood. Most of the smaller burnings that I did only took a few minutes before the electricity joined together and the circuit is closed, so it's a very fast process. However, some of the larger pieces that I did on big sheets of MDF and big boards of wood could take up to 5 or 6 hours and I'd have to move the electrodes into different positions to cover the whole wood, so sometimes it can take a longer time. Once the burning is complete, it's then time for finishing of the wood. The first thing that I did was to use a brush and lots of water to wash off all of the conductive solution. I also used a toothbrush to get out all of the ash and soot from inside the burned paths since this is just loose and if it isn't brushed out as you sand the wood it gets into the grain and it turns the whole piece a disgusting dark grey colour and it really doesn't look good, it just makes the wood look as if it's dirty. After that I'd then sand the pieces all the way up to a high finish, probably about 1000 grit, then I'd oil them with boiled linseed oil and this is just standard what I do on most pieces of wood. The boiled linseed oil brings out the contrast of the grain of the wood and it makes it look nicer. It also darkens the burned patches so that they stand out more. You could probably finish it in other ways but I didn't experiment with different finishes on this. The main thing that's going to vary the patterns that you get is going to be changing the different species of wood and changing what type of grain you're using. I probably had the worst results on soft woods like pine and oak. The electric forks created in these wood lack detail and they were pretty boring. I did find the end grain of oak and the heartwood of the oak would create some much more interesting patterns than the side grain would. However, I still preferred the patterns in harder wood and MDF. After experimenting with the oak, I went and tried a harder wood, and the wood that I'm using here is some laburnum wood. This is much denser wood than oak, and it has some very fine details in the grain, and that makes some really interesting patterns in the lightning forks. I found that with the laburnum wood, the forks of the electricity seem to loosely follow the grain pattern of the wood, which I thought was quite interesting. My theory is that it's probably due to the fact that the alternating layers of grain have different water absorption rates and therefore a different conductivity when soaked in the conductive solution. And as I said earlier, the electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance, meaning that the part of the wood that is the most saturated is going to receive a higher current and then burn more. At this point, all of my burning on the burnum was going really well, but I'd only been able to do small scale pieces since I don't have any large boards. To fix that problem, I just took a massive piece of the trunk and I started sawing away at it with a big wood saw until I had a thin board that was long enough for me to practice doing some more burning on. This is the sort of thing where it would be really nice to have a bandsaw, but unfortunately I don't, so I had to use a wood saw to cut all the way down. Because I used a wood saw, the surface was really rough and uneven, so I then had to use a belt sander to smooth everything out, and then some sandpaper. All of the burning probably took about an hour and a half or maybe two hours because it was a bit of a larger piece and then after that I did the usual sanding routine, sanded it all the way up to 1500 grit then polished it with boiled linseed oil. This turned out to be one of my nicest pieces so far and I think the burning contrasts really nicely with the rich grain pattern. While doing my experiments with laburnum I also used my wood lathe to carve this circular ball from a large piece of the trunk. Once I'd finished carving it, to add some more detail into the piece, I did some electric burning on it, and it came out really nicely, and I'll create a video in the future about how I made this wooden ball on my wood lathe, because the process is quite interesting, and I had to make a few new attachments to the wood lathe. So the link will be in the description down below when that's complete. Surprisingly enough, some of my best results with the burning actually came from MDF, or medium density fibreboard. 
The black lightning figures contrast really nicely with the bland brown muddy surface of the board and it's really interesting to see how such a uniform and artificial material could be transformed into something really detailed just through burning it with electricity. Another great feature of the MDF is that thin sheets of material like this only cost about 5 or £6 pounds to buy so they're very cheap and you can do really large experiments on it with such a cheap material. It's probably the cheapest sheet material on this size that would actually work. Throughout all of my experiments I think I found that MDF was the material that produced the most detailed lightning fork patterns so I was really surprised that it worked this well. It's really interesting to watch the lightning forks grow out of the material like this. The largest experiments that I did were on sheets that were about 700mm wide and about 1500mm long and these both took about 4 or 5 hours each to burn so that it's not that quick when it's on such a large scale. I also found that with a thin sheet of MDF like this, if I left the burning for too long in one single place, it could actually burn all the way through the 6mm of wood, which was not ideal. I've already shown most of these images of the burning that I took, and you might be wondering how I took them. As the electricity breaks down the wood, it sparks and flashes in different places where it's burning. If I turn out the lights and leave the camera shutter wide open with a very low ISO and a very narrow aperture, then all of these flashes of light light up a certain area on the sensor. By the time that the whole burning is complete, the pattern of the burn is lit up on the camera like a flash of lightning, and it's like a map of the entire burning in one single long exposure photograph. I think it's a really cool way of visualising the whole burning pattern and some of these exposures are up to an hour long. I'm really impressed with the level of detail they've been able to capture and some of the really interesting colours that come out of it. So that pretty much concludes all of the experiments that I'm going to show in this video. I actually did do some further experiments with this method where I burned some channels even deeper by leaving them on and then poured cast aluminium and resin and melted some solder into the cracks and then saw how the burning patterns would develop from there. And there'll be videos in the future on these different methods. Some of the resin pieces that I've done where I've smoothed off the resin and it's a complete flat surface look much more complete than ones with the indents from the burning, so I'll definitely detail that in a future video. So that pretty much concludes all of the experiments with the electric burning that I've done in the last year, and I'm definitely going to do some more in the future and try and refine the method, so if you've got any suggestions on what I could try and what I could do to improve this method, then please leave them in the comments down below because I read all of the comments. This video has literally taken me months to create. It's taken so much work just to do all of the experiments, let alone film all of them and then edit them and put them all together into one video. And I'll have more videos like it coming out in the future, so if you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. If you want early access to these videos, consider supporting me on Patreon, the link is in the description down below. And if you want more information on what I'm doing in between projects, then follow me on the Instagram. So thanks for watching this far, and hopefully the next video on the cast aluminium and resin will be out soon.